Hello, this is a past paper of A level, May June 2020. Question number one Define gravitational potential at a point. We know that it is work done per unit mass to move it from infinity to the point. So if you don't mention from infinity, uh, you will lose one mark. Part B An isolated solid sphere of radius r may be assumed to have its mass concentrated at its center. The magnitude of the gravitational potential at the surface of the sphere is phi. On figure 1.1, show the variation of the gravitational potential with distance from the center of the sphere for values of d from r to 4r. Okay. So, um, first of all, phi is equal to minus gm over r, gravitational potential. We know that g and m are constant. That's why phi is inversely proportional to 1 over distance with negative sign. That's why phi is always negative. It means it is attractive force uh, by Earth or by any, uh, for example, planet. So now uh, to draw gravitational potential against uh, R, I suppose R is 1. That's why phi is negative 1 over R, which is negative 1. When R is 2, phi is negative 0 0.5. And when R is 4, phi is negative 1 over 4, which is negative 0 0.25. Okay, when r is 1, it means uh, 1 phi, so negative 1 phi. So phi is negative 1 phi. So gravitational potential is negative 1 phi. So this is first point. When r is 2, phi is negative 0 0.5. This is second point. And when r is 4, phi is negative 0 0.25. So you can draw these three lines. Uh, you can connect them. So it, it is a curve. So, uh, you can get three marks. The sphere in B is a planet with radius r of 6.4 times 10 to the power 6 meter and mass of 6 times 10 to the power 24 kg. The planet has no atmosphere. A rock of mass 3.4 times 10 to the power 3 kg moves directly towards the planet. Uh, its distance from the center of the planet changes from 4r to 3r. Calculate the change in gravitational potential energy of the rock. Okay, so rock is in 4r, distance from the center of the Earth, now come towards the Earth and uh, distance from the center become 3r. So by using phi is equal to negative gmm over r, <coughs> you can find um, gravitational potential energy. So gravitational potential energy, uh, it is uh, not phi, I should change the sign. It is, uh, I can write gravitational potential energy. So this is change of gravitational potential energy. So you can say, Delta gravitational potential energy. So, <clears throat> Delta gravitational potential, Delta EP. So, GMM over 4R minus GMM divided by 3R. If you factorize GMM, and substitute r because r is 6.4 times 10 to the power 6 if you substitute you will get delta ep is equal to 
nearly 1.8 times 10 to the power 10 joule. Explain whether the rock's speed increases, decreases, or stays the same. So, we know that gravitational is always attractive because uh, every object comes toward the Earth because of gravitational uh, acceleration. That's why rock moves toward planet. So, it speeds up. Question 2. A square box of volume V contains N molecules of an ideal gas. Each molecule has mass M. Using the kinetic theory of ideal gases, it can be shown that if all the molecules are moving with a speed V at right angles to one face of the box, the pressure exerted on the face of the box is given by the expression PV is equal to Nm uh, V square. This expression leads to the formula P is equal to 1 over 3 rho um, C square. C square is average of a speed of molecules, average of a square of a speed of molecules. For the pressure P of an ideal gas, where P is the density of the gas and C square is the mean square a speed of the molecules, explain how each of the following term in equation 2 is derived from equation 1. So density is equal to Nm over V. So um, you know that density is mass over volume and mass of one molecule times number of molecules is Nm divided by volume. What is the sign of 1 over 3? We know that molecules move in three dimensions. So 1 over 3 is, N, is in any one direction. And C square is because molecules have different speeds, that's why if you take average, it becomes a speed of average a square. So, um, a speed, so this sign should be inside, a speed, a square, then average sign. An ideal gas has volume, pressure, and temperature as shown. The mass of the gas is 20.7 g. Calculate the mass of one molecule of the gas. First of all, temperature must be in Kelvin. So, uh, relationship between Kelvin and centigrade is Kelvin is equal to centigrade plus 273. So, 17 plus 273 become 290 Kelvin. We know that uh, PV is NKT, so N is PV divided by KT, P and V and temperature given, and um, K is Boltzmann constant, which is 1.38 times 10 to the power 23, and temperature is 290 Kelvin, P and V also, P is 3 times 10 to the power 5 Pascal, and V is 6 times 10 to the power negative 3 meter cube. If you substitute, you can get uh, n. So n is 4.5 times 10 to the power 23. And then mass of one molecules. So for mass of one molecule, you should divide mass of the gas, which is 20.7, divided by number of molecules. You will get 4.6 times 10 to the power negative 23 gram. Uh, question 3. By reference to the first law of thermodynamics, a state and explain the change, if any, in the internal energy of a lump of solid lit as it melts at constant temperature. We suppose that in melting, no change of volume. That's why no external work done. So, thermal energy is supplied to provide latent heat so internal energy increases uh, if you want to explain by formula you can say that delta u is equal to q plus w uh, when w is zero because no change of volume uh, that's why delta u is equal to q so q uh, is providing latent heat that's why uh, q increases in the system so delta u increases some gas in a total toy balloon when the balloon bursts and no thermal energy enters or leaves the gas. Okay. 
When no thermal energy enters or leaves the gas, it means Q is zero. So delta U is equal to W based on uh, thermodynamic uh, first law. So rapid increase in volume causes gas uh, to work down against the atmosphere. That's why, that's why when gas worked on against atmosphere, it means W of gas is negative because it gives work. So W, it gives work to the surrounding. That's why W is negative. So delta U is equal to W. So delta U is negative and internal energy decreases. Question four. A dish is made from a section of a hollow gas glass sphere. The dish fixed at the horizontal table contains a small solid ball of mass 45 gram. The horizontal displacement of the ball from the center of the dish is C, sorry, X. Initially, the ball is held at rest with distance uh, 3 cm. The ball is released. Variation with time of horizontal displacement of the ball from point C is shown in figure 4.2. The motion of the ball in the dish is simple harmonic with its acceleration given by expression A equal to minus G over R X, where G is acceleration of free form and R is a constant uh, that depends on the dimensions of the dish and the ball. Use figure 4.2 to show that the angular frequency of oscillation of the ball in the dish is 2.9 radian per second. So from the figure for one complete cycle you can find time period. So time period is 2.2 seconds as I showed in the figure 2.2 seconds for one complete cycle. So omega is 2 pi over t so 2 pi divided by 2.2 which is equal to 2.85 radian per second. So, which is nearly 2.9 radian per second. Use the information in A to determine R. So, acceleration, we know that acceleration is equal to negative omega squared times x. In this question, acceleration is equal to minus g divided by r times x. If you compare these two formula, you will get omega squared is equal to g over r. So r is equal to g divided by omega squared. If you substitute data, you will get 1.2 meter for r. Next part, calculate the speed of the ball as it passes over the center C of the dish. So when ball passes over the center, velocity is maximum. And formula of velocity of maximum is equal to omega times amplitude so omega x zero so omega is 2.86 x zero is amplitude which is 3 times 10 to the power negative 2 so maximum speed will be 0 0.087 meter per second some moisture collects on the surface of the dish so that the motion of the ball becomes lightly damped on the axis of figure 4.2 draw a line to show the lightly damped motion of the ball for the first five seconds after the releases of the ball. Okay, so um, at the blue curve is answer for this part. So uh, starting from three centimeter, nearly same period or longer because it is slightly damp. So period must be longer or same period doesn't matter and because of damping amplitude should be lower than original one so amplitude should be decreased uh, little by little uh, when you pass each cycle as you can see uh, from first cycle to second cycle amplitude decreases more a slightly decreases so it means it is damping Question 5. 
explain the principles of the detection of ultrasound waves for medical diagnosis. When the ultrasound wave returns, the quartz crystal vibrates, which produces an alternating PD acoustic crystal. So, received signal can be processed and used for medical diagnosis. So this is principle of detection of ultrasound wave. By reference to a specific acoustic impedance, explain why there is very little transmission of ultrasound wave from air into a skin. We know that a specific acoustic impedance of air and a skin are very different. An intensity reflection coefficient depends on difference between acoustic impedance. That's why most ultrasound is reflected and a little bit uh, transmit. That's why uh, from air to skin. So three important points you can get three marks for this part. Telephone signals may be transmitted either by means of an optic fiber or by means of a wire pair. A state three advantages of the use of optic fiber rather than a wire pair. So we know that optic fiber has greater bandwidth, less attenuation, greater security. And also you can mention less noise. So out of four, if you say three, you will get Three marks. Part B. It is, prop it is proposed to transmit a signal over a distance of 4.5 times 10 to the power of 3 km by means of an optic fiber. The input signal has a power of 9.8 milliwatts. The minimum signal that can be detected at the output has a power of 6.3 times 10 to the power of negative 17 watts. For this signal power, the signal to noise ratio is 21 decibel. Calculate the power of the background noise. Okay. We know that signal to noise ratio in terms of decibel is equal to 10 log P1 divided by P2. P1 is signal and P2 is noise power. So uh, ratio is 21. It is given. Uh, then signal power is 6.3 times uh, output power is 6.3 times 10 to power negative 17 and noise uh, power is not given so if you calculate you can get 5 times 10 to power negative 19 watt the maximum attenuation per unit length of the optic fiber that allows for uninterrupted transmission of the signal We know that attenuation is 10 log P1 divided by P2. So, um, it is given uh, input signal is 9.8 times 10 to the power negative 3. Input signal is given divided by receive signal, which is 6.3. Uh, or output which is 6.3 times 10 to power negative 17 so you will get 141.91 decibel this is attenuation now attenuation per unit length so attenuation divided by uh, the length of optic fiber which is 4.5 times 10 to power 3 kilometers so you will get 0 0.0315 decibel per, per kilometer A metal sphere of radius R is isolated in space. Point P is a distance from the center of the sphere. The variation with distance X of the electric field as strength due to the charge on the sphere is shown. A state what is meant by electric field strength. So electric field strength is force per unit positive charge.
Use figure 7.2 to determine the radius r of the sphere. Explain your working. We know that electric field inside conductor is zero. That's why if you look at figure r will be 4.5 cm. So uh, r is the place where electric field is zero. So it is 4.5 cm. Up to here is the answer for R. Use figure 7.2 to determine the charge on the sphere. So electric field is equal to Q divided by 4 pi epsilon 0 R square. So what is Q? If you do multiplication, you will get Q. So uh, what is E? E is given. E is uh, when it is 4.5 centimeter, so E is 18 times 10 to the power 5. So if you substitute data, you will get 4.1 times 10 to the power negative 7 coulomb. An alpha particle is situated a distance 8 centimeter from the center of the sphere. Calculate the acceleration of the alpha particle. Okay. First of all, charge of alpha particle is 2e, 2 proton or 2e. Mass of alpha particle is 2 mass of proton plus 2 mass of neutron. Mass of proton is nearly equal to mass of neutron. That's why uh, mass of alpha particle is nearly 4 times mass of proton. So it is 4 times 1.66 times 10 to the power 20, negative 27. Kg. So at 8 cm, electric field is equal to 5.75 times 10 to the power of 5. So when E is 8 cm, electric field is 5.75 times 10 to the power of 5, based on figure 7.2. That's why uh, we know that F is MA and also in a static chapter is equal to EQ, a static electricity. So what is A? EQ divided by M. E is 5.75 times 10 to the power of 5. Q is equal to 2 times charge of E, so 2 times 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. And mass of alpha is 4 times mass of proton so then you can get acceleration is equal to 2.8 times 10 to the power 13 meter per second a square an ideal operational amplifier is connected to a load resistor the op amp is assumed to have infinite bandwidth and zero output resistance a state what is meant by infinite bandwidth so infinite bandwidth means constant gain for all frequencies. So gain is constant in infinite bandwidth. The effect, if any, on the output voltage of increasing the load resistor. There is no effect. There is no effect of output voltage. A student designs the circuit shown in figure 8.1 in order to indicate changes in temperature of the thermistor. Explain why point P is known as the virtual Earth. We know that gain of op amp, because this op amp is ideal, so gain of op amp is infinite. So, and feedback loop ensures that V of positive is equal to V of negative. Non inverting input non-inverting input voltage is zero so is zero volt non-inverting non-inverting input is zero volt so you can see that it is zero volt so from here to here you can see it is zero volt so inverting input also is at zero volt that's why p is virtual earth and 
potential difference, I mean potential difference of, so potential of P is zero volt. That's why it is called virtual earth. Calculate the potential at point P. We know that in series, total V divided by total resistance is equal to V of one of them, one of the resistance divided by uh, R of this resistor. So Vt, total V divided by 110 plus 40. So V total, V total, this is total V divided by 110 plus 40 is equal to V of Q or V of 40 divided by 40 ohm. So V of 40 divided by 40 ohm. If you, if you do cross multiplication, you will get V of Q is equal to 0 0.4 because one part of the resistor Q is connected to 0 volt. That's why potential difference will be 0 0.4 volt. And V of Q is also is 0 0.4 volt. At a temperature of 13 degrees Celsius, the resistance of the thermistor is 230 kilo ohm. Show that the potential difference measured with the voltmeter is 0 0.88 volt. We know that feedback current is equal to V divided by R. So V is 0 0.4 and R is 150 kilo ohm. So based on figure, if you can, uh, you can see that, uh, total resistance is 230 and V of uh, Q is 0 0.4 <coughs> V of P is 0 V of P is 0 this point V is 0 V of Q is 0 0.4 that's why uh, potential difference of 150 kilo ohm is 0 0.4 so you can find I which after that I passes from point P and goes to the feedback loop so I of feedback loop is equal to I uh, between Q and P so <coughs> Feedback current is V over R, V is 0 0.4 divided by R. You can find uh, current and then V is equal to IR. Uh, you can find uh, V of potential difference uh, measured by voltmeter, which is I is 2.66 times 10 to power negative 6 times 100 plus 230. 100 plus 230. Um, because thermistor at uh, 13 degrees Celsius shows 230 kilo ohm plus 100, which is 330 kilo ohm total resistance, and I also uh, passes from P, which you calculated from last part, so you can go, you can get uh, V, which is 0 0.88 volt. The resistance of the thermistor in B decreases as temperature rises. Explain the effect of this change in temperature on the potential difference measured with the voltmeter. So, when temperature decreases, when temperature rises, um, resistance of thermistor decreases. So, gain decreases. That's why voltmeter shows a smaller amount. So, that's why voltmeter reading decreases. Question 9. An electron is traveling at a speed v in a straight line in a vacuum. It enters a uniform magnetic field of flux density 8 times 10 to power negative 4 Tesla. Initially, the electron is traveling at right angles to the magnetic field. The path of the electron in the magnetic field is an arc of circle, radius 6.4 cm. State and explain the direction of the magnetic field. Okay. Magnetic field is into the page. Path of electron is to the right. That's why 
uh, if you use left hand rule you can get a field which is uh, okay force is downward sorry for this question force is given force is downward a path of electron is to the right if you use a left hand rule you can get a directional magnetic field which is into the plane of the paper because force is downward based on path of electron we can understand that uh, force is downward show that the speed of the electron is 9 times 10 to the power 6 meter per second we know that <coughs> uh, when path of electron become curved we have centripetal force so centripetal force is mv square divided by r which is equal to magnetic force which is qvb magnetic force exerted on charge which is equal QVB then you can find V which is QBR divided by M if you substitute data for example Q is 1.6 times 10 to the power negative 19 B is 8 times 10 to the power negative 4 Tesla and R is 6.4 centimeter which is 6.4 times 10 to the power negative 2 divided by mass of electron which is 9.11 times 10 to the power negative 31 so you will get 9 times 10 to the power 6 meter per second so this is a speed of electron. A uniform electric field is now applied in the same region as the magnetic field. Electron passes undeviated through the region of the two fields. On figure, mark with an arrow the direction of the uniform electric field. We know that magnetic force is downward that's why because it is undeviated so electric field should be electric force should be upward so electric force is upward and magnetic force is downward when electric force is upward and charge is negative that's why field should be in opposite direction of electric uh, force so field should be downward so this is arrow for electric field this uh, figure would be acceptable this uh, arrow not outside outside is explanation this is acceptable for this part part two Use data from A to calculate the magnitude of the electric field S strand. So you should find electric field. So electric force is EQ, magnetic force is QVB. If you cancel charge, you will get E is equal to V times B. If you substitute numbers, you can get 7.2 times 10 to the power 3 Newton per Coulomb. Electron in B is now replaced by an alpha particle traveling at the same speed along the same initial path as the electron. Describe and explain the shape of the path in the region of the magnetic and electric field. So <clears throat> there is no deflection. Why? Because condition for no deflection depends only on V and V is equal to E divided by B E and B both of them are constant that's why no deflection no deflection if you replace alpha particle instead of electron so no deflection for alpha particle A state Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Induced EMF is proportional to rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. Part B. A simple iron core transformer is illustrated in figure 10.1. A state one function of the transformer. 
uh, it is uh, to change size of the potential difference or you can say that transformer is defined as a static device that changes the level of voltage between circuits. A sinusoidal alternating current in the primary coil gives rise to a varying magnetic flux linking the secondary coil. Use Faraday's law to explain why the output from the transformer is an electromotive force that is alternating. EMF varies as rate of change of flux changes based on Faraday's law. And direction of EMF changes when direction of change of flux reverses. So if you change direction of flux, direction of EMF changes. We know that flux is continuously increasing and decreasing. That's why direction of EMF is switching in opposite direction continuously. A state why the soft iron core of the transformer is laminated. You can say to reduce power loss or to reduce eddy current. Question 11. The uppermost energy bands in a solid are known as the valence band forbidden band and the conduction band. A copper wire is at room temperature. Use band theory to explain why the resistance of the copper wire increases as its temperature increases. We know that conduction band and valence band overlap. So number of charge and also number of charge carries doesn't change. That's why when temperature increases, lattice vibration increases. So this is prevents movement of charge carries. So resistance increases because uh, when you prevent movement of charge, it means resistance of that material will increase. A structure of a copper crystal is to be ex examined using electron diffraction. Electrons having been accelerated from rest through a potential difference V are incident on the crystal. A Dubrois wavelength of the electron is 2.6 times 10 to the power negative 11 meter. Calculate the accelerating potential difference V. We know that Dubrois wavelength formula is P is equal to H over lambda. And P is a momentum which is equal to mass times velocity. If you substitute a P with mv, so you will get mv is equal to h over lambda. So you can find v by substitute numbers, you will get 2.80 times 10 to the power 7 meter per second. Now, work done is equal to change of kinetic energy. Work done is equal to q times potential difference which is equal to 1 over 2 mv squared. Then you can find potential difference, which is 1 over 2 mv squared divided by q. So again, if you substitute numbers, you will get v is equal to 2.2 times 10 to the power 3 volt. Next question. State what is meant by the mass defect of a nucleus. Difference between mass of nucleus and mass of nucleons where nucleons are separated to infinity. So this difference of mass is called mass defect. Next part. Show that energy equivalence of one U is 934 mega electron volt. Some information is given on table 12.1. We know that 1U is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the power negative 27 kg. 1 mega is 10 to the power 6, it is prefix, and 1 electron charge is equal to 
times 10 to the power negative 19 Coulomb. Mass energy relationship is equal to E is equal to MC squared. Mass is mass of 1U times a speed of light a square. You will get 1.494 times 10 to the power negative 10 Joule. Then if you divide it by 10 to the power 6, you will get mega. If you divide by charge of one electron, you will get mega electron volt. So 900, nearly 934 mega electron volt will be energy of equivalence to one U. The binding energy per nucleon of a helium-4 is 7.09 mega electron volt. So you should find that. <coughs> uh, we know that hydrogen has one proton. Isotope of hydrogen, H2, has one proton and one neutron. Another isotope of hydrogen is H3, which has two neutrons and one proton. Helium-4 has two protons and two neutrons. So, helium must change to two isotopes of, uh, I mean, uh, should change to two isotopes of uh, hydrogen, H2, H2. So, our question is that, does this happen or no? Binding energy per nucleon of helium is 7.092. Binding energy, uh, so first of all, uh, you should find binding energy per nucleon of a helium. So mass defect is two times mass of uh, proton plus two times mass of neutron in terms of U minus mass of nucleus, which is 4.001506. So mass defect is 0 0.003376U, then uh, binding energy per nucleon, so uh, you can use mass defect times energy of 1U, which is 900, uh, 934 mega electron volt, divided by number of nucleon, for helium is 4. So if you calculate, you will get 7.09 mega electron volt. This is the first part. And for part C, as I explained, helium-4 should change to two isotope of hydrogen or no. We know that more binding energy means more stable. So 7.09 mega electron volt binding energy of helium is more than 3 mega electron volt. So, helium is stable and H2 is not stable. That's why this reaction doesn't happen. So, it is said that isotope of hydrogen binding energy per nucleon is less than 3, suggests why a nucleus of helium doesn't spontaneously break down to become nuclei of hydrogen. As I said, binding energy per nucleon of helium is much greater, it is 7.09. That's why a large amount of energy is required to separate all nucleons in nucleus. So, but binding energy of uh, binding energy per nucleon of uh, isotope of hydrogen is less than three mega electron volt. So that's why this reaction doesn't happen. So thank you very much. Uh, for watching this video and uh, do not forget to subscribe. Thank you and goodbye.